Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation that's meant to help you drift off and find your way to sleep. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. And I'm here trying to make him laugh. I'm Amanda Barker. I'm a bad influence. She is. She can be anyways. Amanda, Mm. we have some, some... social media posts that I have to cover. Oh no, controversial. No, they're not actually. Drama filled. So you might remember. Comforting? Question mark? Just lovely, okay. shall we say. Oh, that's nice. I like that. So we have one from Lisa Cole who commented on Plaid versus Ging- Gingham, our last episode. Yeah. And they write, I had to listen to this three times. I could not get anywhere, anywhere near the end. Oh, good. That's a really good sign. Which is, of course, we hope you never get to the end of our episodes. Yeah. And don't feel you have to go back and listen if you don't. But if that comforts you, by all means. Yeah. Superbly mundane podcast. Thank you. And she writes, thank you. Although my nerdy textiles head wanted you to know that gingham and plaid are woven, not printed. Oh, that is good to know. I think I think one of us must have said it was a print, but it's Probably woven. That makes me, sense. me, because I, I guess I always thought you could do a gingham pattern onto something, but it makes sense. I mean, a plaid would definitely be woven, right? Different colors, different fabrics, etc. I would... Or I, yarn, threads, I suppose. I don't know. But it makes sense to me. Well, we don't know. That's why it's mundane. We're not experts, really. On, on, Certainly not on... I'm a great lover of textiles. I would call myself a textile enthusiast. Certainly. Or at least a fan. And if you are a lover of textiles, and you happen to be in our fair city, there's a textile museum that you can go to. It's lovely. It's on Center Street, which is... I think technically part of Chinatown here in Toronto. That's the area anyway. And um, sort of near the university. And it is a beautiful, beautiful, petite museum. Yeah, it is. It is quaint. A boutique type of museum. But there's always two or three exhibits going on. But what I mean by that is you can have a good hour or two there. Some museums are extremely vast, including in this city. That would not be one of them. It's it's a more specialized museum. And um, I certainly have had some wonderful experiences there. There's a there's a library for textile enthusiasts. There's hands-on exhibits as well. It's definitely something to check out. And it's, I don't want to say unusual, but it's atypical for a museum that you would go to in a city. So I recommend it. Yeah, specialized. We have a few specialized museums. We have the Gardner Museum of Ceramic Art. The Bata Shoe Museum. A shoe museum, which full I have to admit I've never been to. I've been to the the gift shop. Okay. And it's one of the things I love to do is go to a gift shop of a museum. Mm-hmm. Especially if I don't have time to tour the museum. For some reason, every time I'm at the Bata Shoe Museum, I don't have time to go in to see it. This is, for those of you who don't know us, and even if you do, you might not know this, We live walking distance to this museum and have lived walking distance to this museum, some of us in this room, for 20 years. So we really... I feel like that's a bit of an accusation to me. Well, I've I've also lived walking distance from that museum. I don't think it's walking distance. That's a bit of a walk. It's Bloor and Bathurst. No, it's it's not Bloor and Bathurst. Bloor and Spadina? Bloor and St. George-ish. I mean, still... It's You're a bit talking of a walk. the difference of like three minutes each. Uh, three minutes, you know, I could be having a coffee and be, a donut. Uh, I'm going to look. Let's play a little game. How long do you think a walk it would be? A normal pace. And I'll look at my phone and see I what see. it tells us. 38 minutes. Oh, see, I was thinking it would be more like 18 minutes. So let's see. 38. Amanda will look on her phone. Hopefully her phone won't make beeps and and no, that rings would, and whatnot. No, that's not my phone that normally does that. Well, listen, I'd love to know what interesting museums are in your city or town or village or metropolis. Let us know if there's an unusual uh, museum. So I said 38 and you said 15 minutes. What I said 18 f- and the answer is actually 39 Thank minutes. Thank you. You're so Thank close. Thank you. By Thank one you. minute you got it. 
still, yep. forty minute walk is walkable. Mm. It's a hike. Is it? Okay. It's, it's a it's um it's a robust walk. Sure, sure, fair enough. Okay. Okay, so that brings me to I posted on my own Instagram page. Um, so I I had to access some books, some mm-hmm. reference books that I need to do a little bit of research on. Okay, and they were they were tucked in our library. By the way, Amanda turns the books so that the spines aren't facing me, so I have to go through all the books to find the books I any need. Any disciple of any design show will do the same. Well, it, it makes... It, it's it, brutal, I know, but it, it's so it's, much easier on the eyes to just have beigey books, pages, no, so, versus a bunch of spines yelling their titles at you. So for some reason, our library has the pages facing you instead when of the spines. When he says library, it's two shelves. A library. So, I mean, <laughs> our true. library. It's true. It's, it's not even a full wall shelf it's two it's like a half there's shell. a window and it's just two shelves under the window okay our so library. we don't have an extensive our library <laughs> okay our bookshelf i mean the truth is we use the library that's why we don't own it's a true. lot of books it's true. and if we do we don't keep them we've talked about that a lot on this podcast we have, we have. well i was searching for these reference books mm-hmm. and so i found them in and, our library in our library of two shelves which most people have more books than us, for sure. Most people, you listener, probably have more books in your home than I we do. I feel like we're we have a lot of friends and colleagues and peers that would say, "I love books. I have so many books." We do not. I mean, we love books. Well, you are an avid reader of books. I am, but that's just it. I think if I was a mid-sized reader, mm-hmm. well, avid. I mean, there are a lot of people that read a lot more than I do. I'm not, fair. I'm um. An average to robust reader. Okay, fair enough. That's my work today. Fair enough. You're also a good giver of books. Like you you finish your book, you enjoy it, and then you pass it along. Right. I don't keep them. Again, if, if I really need to go back to a book or reference a book, that's what the library, or I'll just buy it again. Yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm, for. I'm much more inclined to either ask for a book for a special occasion or access the I'm library. I'm very sentimental about so many things in my life that I've worked really hard to try to find things that take up space that I'm not sentimental about so I can be the uh, the fluid, boundary, free-flowing, get one, get rid of one kind of person. But there, you know, there are a few that I keep. Sure. Well, anyways, back to my post. Yes. So I, pu- I get these reference books that I'm looking at and I find a different bookmark in each, none of which are bookmarks. Mm-hmm. One is a transfer subway ticket. Oh, wow. One is a part of a movie stub for the movie World War 3D. What's World War 3D we saw? World War War Z and 3D? No, it was, we saw it at the Hudson Mall. I don't even know where that is. The Hudson Mall. Are you sure this is us? That's somebody in Quebec. We saw it Sunday. What's what's the six months? Uh, we saw it on Sunday, June twenty third, two thousand and thirteen. I'm going to offer something. Yeah, I'm going to offer that that might have been Nidhi's book. Oh, and the Hudson Mall would mean it's in Quebec. Which, if I'm thinking Hudson, Quebec, which it may not be, but. If it's Nitty's book, then it would have been her bookmark. Mm, I don't think so. Those those of you listening would know Nitty, I would hope, uh, pretty well. If you don't, um, go back to some 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 back issues of this podcast to well, use a book term because uh, you'll hear a lot of her. And well, we love her deeply. We saw it in, or whomever saw it, that I have this ticket stub that I'm using as a bookmark. What, what was it called? World War? 3D. World War 3D. I don't like that. Okay. I know it doesn't, even that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And the other book had a train ticket. Oh, wow. To Girona. Okay. When we were in Spain. Oh, wow. So that's what I used instead of bookmarks. A train ticket to Girona. That's in Spain, folks, a in case you Possibly Quebecois or maybe stub. New York ticket stub. I don't, Hudson Mall. I mean, it could be New York. Could be. It, how. If it's your book, that would be really old if, when you lived in New York. It was 2013. Was when oh, this no. Was. So we were here. Yeah. So I don't know. Huh. Okay. 
I was on tour. So if I used it, I was on tour somewhere. Um, Anyways, and, so I post- And what was the subway transfer? It was a transfer and it was in 2015, <laughs> May 13th at Bayview Station. Oh, you know where you were going. To the dentist. To the dentist, yeah. probably. So those were my bookmarks. A life in bookmarks. A life in bookmarks, indeed. And so Allison, Allison, I'm going to say her name wrong. Hard shall live. Uh, I said I liked it. what you said. I don't yeah. know. I, I and, and, and Allison corrected us too on how to say her name. Great. But anyway, so great, Allison. Great work with that, Michael. <laughs> I'm sorry, Allison. <laughs> I'm hoping Allison will be asleep at this point. It'll be our thing. We butcher your name. I'm so sorry, Allison. That's not a thing. Allison says a future topic for the insomnia project. What's the first memory you get when you are looking at a receipt or a ticket stub? So we go through the receipts and talk about the memories associated with them. And Do you want me to go? I can go grab our tax file. No, no. I'm uh, not. I don't mean that in jest. I mean, no. I, I would do that. Is there when you look at an old ticket stub, or train ticket, right, or plane ticket, right? What comes to mind? For it's you? always who I was with. Oh, okay. So, Gerona, I was with you. Mm-hmm. Hudson, I, we'll have to figure out what that was. But if that was mine, it was when I was on tour with a show. That mm-hmm. was a comedic riff on the 50 shades of gray called right. spank um and then bayview station i immediately think y- of the dentist going to the our dentist. dentist who's an amazing man b- beyond his dentistry his name is dr uchi odiatu uh and he's a health and wellness expert and yeah. when i worked in radio i used to book him as our health and wellness expert and then one day it just happened i happened to find out he's also a dentist and now we go to him and we love him He's actually considering doing a podcast because he's been asking right. the podcast. So when he does, or should he should he do that, I will let our listeners know. Anyone who's still with us and wants to look it up, Odiatu, O-D-A, O-D-I-A-T-U. Okay, so Allison goes on to say that they've still kept stubs from the Metro on Milan, in Milan. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And, um, what are your, so that's my answer, who I was with. What are yours? I try, well, clearly I don't remember this World War III that I may or may not have seen, but mm. I just try to remember where it was, what I might be doing. I don't give it too much thought, to be honest with you. Um, I file a lot of those things for tax purposes, and then they, what I'll do, what I will do actually, if there's some sort of paper that I find value in. I'll put it in my taxes in the miscellaneous slot. I have an accordion file Mm -hmm. and then I'll take it out and I'll review it and I'll bring it forward to my next tax season. So I always see it. I do that too. So for example, I have a, a, I have a report card from when I was a kid Mm. that I found, I guess I found at my mom's place. And so I took it and I I don't know what it, I think it's right there. Amanda, you read recently what my report card yeah. said. Was you it and I have similar report cards. We're very chatty, we're, which, you know, now here we are at this podcast, but we were very chatty um, individuals when we were five. Did you want to, you have it in this office. Do you want to yeah, for some reason, give us it. a sample sure. of your report card? So this was from junior kid. <laughs> So <laughs> we have here in this province junior and senior kindergarten. So this this would have you at four years old. Okay, junior kindergarten. Oh my goodness. Um, so I got an S for satisfactory progress or an N for needs improvement. Oh no. And I got all S's. Okay, good. And this Ooh. is what this is what it's I got. Gonna work S's out for you. I accept, and you can you can confirm if I still if I still have a satisfactory progress on this or if I need improvement in these okay, areas. Okay, sounds good. I'll give you the same grading for for now in okay. your podcast. Accepts and follows classroom routines. Yeah, you do. You're pretty routine based. Okay. Participates in group activities, stories, games, discussions. Oh, I'd give you an S plus plus. Okay. Participates in musical and rhythmic activities. Yes, but. To your own, the beat of your own drummer, and and you will make up your own lyrics every time. It's what I love. I tend to sing a lot of Whitney Houston, even though I was never a huge Whitney Houston fan. In fact, there's only two songs of Whitney Houston that I really enjoy. It's real testament to her music that you, for some reason, 
connect to those when you have life day to day things and then you burst out yeah. into into an old Whitney Houston track. Is it because she's in my range? Yes. <laughs> okay. Is willing to try new experiences? I would say yes. Plays with others, shares well? S and S for the most part. Accepts responsibility? I would say mostly yes, yes. Okay. Does not interrupt while others are talking? Yeah, no, you're not an interrupter. That's more me. Yes. You would get an N on that, I think. Yeah, I think I did. Respects personal and other property. Uh, S. You very much respect your own property. Mm -hmm. Language development is the new section that I'm going to be covering. That was social and emotional development. Oh, I see. So in language development, is able to express self orally. Okay. We'll just leave that where that is and I'll give you an S. Recognize his own name. Uh, y yes. Is S able to print name. I hope yes. Or S, sorry. I have nice penmanship. You're beautiful, yes. Someone else wouldn't get in. No, I don't. Okay. We've we've explored that topic. Recognizes colors. I believe you do, S. But some, mm. uh, sometimes you switch them up. I do? Yeah, but that isn't a color thing. That's just more, you say one thing when you mean the other. Like what? Indigo? Like when you say take a left and what you mean is take a right. Okay. Well, we haven't gotten to that section. Or when but... you say it's the blue dress and I'm like, do you mean... The green, yeah, yeah, the green. Green okay. and blue are similar. Yeah, you know. they are. Speaks clearly. Yes, S. Expresses ideas in sentences when speaking. S. Mm, mostly. Oh, yeah, your sentence structure is a little... It can be a little bit off, or I can use... You make fragments into sentences sometimes. That's right. I do. Is developing the skills of listening. S. Takes part in dramatization. S plus plus. Okay, now we're. I, I'm sure this is very boring for our listeners. I hope it. I is. hope it is. Yeah. Reading and number readiness. Um. That's just the section we're in. So oh, I'll okay. give you the. Is interested in books. S. Is able to solve simple readiness puzzles. I think S. I'm good at puzzles. What's a readiness puzzle? I don't know. I guess. I don't it know. It was all the, the rage in I 1979 guess. or whatever this was. Recognizes numerals. S. Understands number concepts. S. I don't know if it was S back then. I don't know if it's still S. Can rote count to 50? Can you? In a couple of languages, actually. And then three S's. Yeah. Physical development. Large muscle coordination. Balancing, skipping, etc. I might give you an N. Needs improvement. Really? Okay. Well. You've been a little hobbly as of last. You've, you've thrown out a back and had some ankle issues. So. It's true. It's true. I'm not as good as when I was in kindergarten. I was much no. more agile, it seems. No. Small muscle coordination, crafts, arts, printing. Of that, that is where you excel. And then there's yes. a general comment from the teacher. But you I'll want let, me to read I'll it? I'll let you read that All because right. I think it's, it's a little bit. Marco is a very good student. That's all it says. That's all, that's all it says? That's all she wants to offer to the world, yeah. Is oh, there more I thought on there the was, back? No, I thought there was more. And then she wrote September placement, where you're going to go in September, and she wrote senior kindergarten AM. You're going to do the mornings. Oh, my goodness. I guess so your mother could cut hair. <laughs> my mother was a hairdresser, so. So I'm sure she wanted to have no. her ladies over in the mornings. No, I think the AM was the, the smarter of the two. Oh, was it? I, I'm going to say it was. Was I AM or PM? I was AM, mm -hmm. kindergarten. I'm trying to remember. No, was I PM? I think I was PM. Oh, no. Well, we went to two different kindergartens. In two different countries. Yeah. Um, I would often get satisfactory on my report cards. Satisfactory at best. I think I would get sometimes the teacher would write something, something, Marco, satisfactory at best. I think every human who's ever gotten a report card has gotten doesn't apply themselves. I right? It, Isn't I, that a thing? I would that also everybody get... Gets? He talks too much. Yeah, I got that too. Yeah. Well, look where it got us. Look who's talking now. <laughs> back of a mic. So where are you now, Miss Fields? I know. I'd like to. I'd like to go back to every teacher Mrs. that says Kelsh. talks too much and force her to listen to my back catalog of podcasts. Who told me I talk too much? Uh, probably Mrs. Sawyer, second grade. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Mrs. Mrs. Doucette, fourth Ooh. grade. I seem to have a lot of like dual teachers, like fourth and fifth and sixth grade. Like I didn't 
have just one. I seem to have a lot of different ones. Were you in a split class? I guess, where we kind of went back and forth between teachers. Yeah, I think so. Because I remember having two when I was in grade five. And in grade six and seven, what they did was they had half of us go into one team made up of three teachers, and then the other half go into one team made up of three different teachers. So I was Ms. Cummings. Let me see if I can remember their names. Ms. Cummings, Mr. Belmore, and then there was somebody in the middle. Oh, Mr. Norton. Wow. It's amazing that I remember that. That is great. Mr. Norton was math and science and physics or something. So algebra, I don't remember, but mathy things. Mr. Belmer was English. I don't know how he was English because he did grammar, but then Ms. Cummings made us recite full poems with okay. the punctuation. Like we had to recite Twas the Night Before Christmas. But with each comma, semicolon, or period, we had to know where each of them were. So you actually you, said them? Yeah. So you'd say, "'Twas the night before Christmas, comma, and all through the oh. house, semicolon. Wow. Not a creature was stirring, comma, not even a mouse, period. We had to recite them like that. And that's you, that's quite a long poem to recite. You are good with punctu- punctuation, I have to say. I'm not. I have, I have an N in punctuation for sure today. And actually, that was my introduction, Very New England, to Robert Frost. We had to do Robert Frost's poems in grade six. And again, all the punctuation. But wow. when I think Twas the Night Before Christmas, we did one a month that we worked on. And Twas the Night Before Christmas was the December one. And that is a long poem when I think is. about it. But we had to each stand in front of the class and recite it. All of you? Yeah, each one at a time. Wow. Yeah. And that's why you're a big fan of Robert Frost, probably. I guess. Mr. Belmore was, a, but she wasn't grammar. We had a separate grammar class. Wow. And Mr. Belmore was tough. I thought you said it was Mrs. Belmore. No, that was Mrs. Cummings, I think. Okay. This was Massachusetts. This was my last I had Mr. Year. Bell. I had a Mr. Bell for art. Oh. He was fun, and he sold his potpourri burners that he, he was all clay, which I love working with clay. And uh, he had a, a kiln, and we had potter's wheels. So we did all clay work with him. And he had, um, he had uh, a business on the side where he would make potpourri burners and he would sell them to the students and we'd buy them. So I, I commissioned him, I guess, at 11 to make one for my mom for Mother's Day. And? And she loved it. Does your mom, your mom probably still has it. I don't think she does, but it How was. How much a, did you pay for this potpourri burner? I think. Fifteen or twenty dollars? That's a lot back then when you were eleven. I guess, but it's kind of a steal for where, us. Where'd you get the cash from? Um, I back then I was teaching dance and babysitting. Wow, I, I had quite a business going. I guess at eleven. Well, I'm glad you remember all your teachers. I don't Do remember. You? I remember some of them. I can tell you that 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 report card was written either by Mrs. Antown. Mm-hmm. Probably her name was. Uptown, and I just, as a kid, I remember it's Antown, and, or Miss Pereira. Okay. But Anton, would it be like Anton? I That's can't. a name. What, I was four or five, I what can't. What was your teacher or teachers in grade six? Or grade, sixth grade? Grade six. Or grade seven. Seven was Mr. Bell. Prior to that was Mr. Desenzo. Okay. I'm going to say. And then prior to that was, I don't remember. Who was your favorite? Did you have a favorite teacher in any grade? Um, I'll tell you this. I, I, I have some favorite teachers from high school. Okay. But I did like Mrs. Anton and Mrs. Pereira, I'm, or Miss Pereira. I, All right. That was, where, that was senior and junior kindergarten. Well, she gave you a good reco. Probably why. Then to, there's, to graduate from Then there's a big lag from there to high school. That's but fair, yeah. Probably my drama teachers I really liked. And I liked uh, Miss, Ma- Miss Masterson, mm-hmm. who I think Linda is friends with. I need to ask Linda if she's friends with Miss Masterson now. That's Linda from Getting Lit with Linda. Um, as well, uh, Sonia Voltan, Miss Miss Voltan. Okay, she, she was your drama teacher. She's my right? drama yeah. teacher. Yeah, she's the one that I think you've mentioned. 
she came to see some of my shows yeah. when I performed professionally. And, That's beautiful. And yeah, it was really lovely. And uh, yeah, those two certainly stand out for me. For me, I had a teacher in the seventh grade, Mr. John Davis. I, I would love to find him. But I don't know where he is. He was, and it's a pretty common name, right? Right, John Davis. Right. He was married to another teacher, and all I remember was she was from Salem because we used to joke that she was a witch from Salem because she wasn't particularly kind. But he, or that's how I remember it. But he was amazing. He was everybody's favorite teacher, and every like I can't tell you how many things I've known on Jeopardy. Because of that man, like, for example, the other day, it was a question about the Sumerian alphabet. And I was like, yeah, it was the, it was the final question. And Amanda says, to, she what tur- is cuneiform? And I'm like, how do you know that? Mr. Davis. He, wow. he managed, he was so excited about history and all kinds of history. I remember him telling us that he campaigned for the guy that lost first against Reagan, I want to say. Okay. He was clearly a Democrat, I guess, and uh, but I didn't know those things at that time. Sure. And he was joking because he was like, nobody in history has lost as bad as this guy, and he's the guy I was rooting for. And even that, like, he was so engaging with his storytelling and his teaching. He, it was social studies. So we did the Egyptians, we did the Sumerians. Sure. And, into um you know greek and roman but anyway he um i'd love to find him because i just thought he was such a great teacher well if you know john davis who taught of massachusetts taught in massachusetts grade uh what grade would he have been um the grade that teaches the sumerian lessons please connect him <laughs> with our podcast i think grade four and grade five grade probably four and five. no maybe i was older maybe it was more like grade six Anywhere between grades four and six, or the, the fourth grade <laughs> to the sixth Hanover Elementary grade. School is where he taught, I believe, and maybe Hanover Junior High, actually, as well. well. It's really specific. I've tried to find him. I can't find him. Well, fair enough. Maybe he doesn't want to be found. I mean, he might not teach anymore. He, he was really engaged. Maybe he went into politics. I don't know. Maybe he's a warlock and he disappeared himself. Well, wherever he is, I hope that he's still enjoying a wonderful life. Listen, if you're a teacher listening to this podcast, I just want to say thank you for all the work that you do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're not sure, give the student an S instead of an N. Having said that, (laughs) we've come to the end of our podcast. Did you want to say something, Amanda? No, I was just an S instead of an N. It's funny. Because I I think an A, B, C, or D. I know. This is, even to me, this seems unusual that that I was um, marked as what was it? Satisfactory progress or needs improvement. Mm-hmm. That's how old I am, I guess, is that they have a system that no one remembers, not even myself. I didn't, There's other teachers I feel now guilty that I should have mentioned them. I'm not sure to whom I feel guilty. Well, but. we'll save that for another episode. Sounds good. Until the next episode, we hope you enjoyed this one and a walk down report card lane. And uh, let us know if you have a topic that you'd like us to cover. And please don't forget to give us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you listen. Five S's. Five S's for us. Until next time, we hope you were able to listen and sleep.